that question. Uh, one thing it could look like is through modularizing education in a way that we don't necessarily just focus everything around the three credit or the six credit course or the five credit course or what have you. That education may change radically. I hope um, would be that we could actually see um, a higher education landscape where well-being is at the center of everything we do. I hope it looks like um, professors working together to write textbooks that meet their individual teaching styles, that meet the learners' individual demands, uh, and that are free. I would like to see that the inclusion of different learning styles, different sources of learning, as opposed to just one source, um, will continue in the future. When students come to places like UBC, there will be a recognition that um, learning outside of the classroom can be just as valuable as the learning that goes on inside the classroom. So students will have, will be encouraged to take more control over what their university experiences are going to look like. So I think universities will still award credentials like degrees, uh, but what I do think we'll see is a much broader range of ways that students can demonstrate competency in a subject to actually earn those credits. I think the word flexible really encompasses like what I would imagine education or hope education looks like in 2050, um, just because it can mean so many different things and like accommodate so many different learning styles. Can we scale up from the apprentice model where you work with someone, an expert, very closely and you become an expert by doing the things that experts do? Can we kind of try to scale that up in some way so that we can reach the hundreds of students in some of our large classes? I think that's that's the big challenge. Virtual reality within a heart, rather than imagining what a heart does and what it looks like. You know, virtual reality of being able to experience how a drug is metabolized in the first person rather than imagining or, or thinking about um, what it looks like from a place where you can't see it. Um, I think that's part of the future is that we get closer to the things that we talk about and we actually begin to immerse ourselves in the way that things happen around us. We are so dependent on the genres of education, the lecture, the quiz, the midterm, the final paper, the final exam. We're so dependent on those genres that are patterns of interaction. I think they've constrained how we imagine what education could be. So if I were looking forward, hopefully, I would hope that we could summon the energy to challenge those traditional patterns and find alternatives, experiment with them. Uh, the, the thing I see us moving towards is research-based teaching, that we will actually look at what it is that helps people learn and the methods and activities that people learn best with, and we'll use that to inform our teaching as we go forward. I hope that there'll be a lot more teamwork and communication among students and teachers because I find that the best way that I've ever learned when it comes to the educational system has been working with others and learning from one another. Because of our advancement in the understanding of learning and teaching, uh, I think we will have to do a tremendous amount of relearning for ourselves how we do assessment. So I think we will um, have all kinds of advances in what I might call the pedagogy in assessment and how we assess learners differently. I think the neurology, uh, the technology, and the assessment are three main areas in which we'll need to give a lot of attention. I think and I hope that education in 2050 will be more of a co-production of knowledge where um, it won't be the instructors necessarily teaching all the material to the students, but it's more of um, the professors will be facilitating um, a session where people will be able to share knowledge.